I got lash extensions for the first time and I would like to complain. They lasted for like five days and then my allergies kicked in and then I peeled them off lash by lash. I went back to another lash tech, too embarrassed to go back to the first, and I sat there again for another two hours like a corpse and paid her another $150 just to pick them off two days later. I've just accepted I'm not a lash extension girly. And so the ones that you're seeing glued on to my eyeballs right now are strip lashes. And this is where I I shall stay. You will never catch me again. Absolutely not. Lash extensions have no benefit. They cost too much. They take too long. They're uncomfortable to put on. They're uncomfortable to have on. And even if they didn't fall off, you'd need to get a fill in within two weeks. It just seems like a scam. A scam that a lot of us have just accepted. And I shall not. I am the revolution. Uh, hi, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Is there anything else I need to talk? Oh, bills. Send it over to Admiral Kenny, sorry. Hello everyone, it's Admiral Kinney, and today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit delivery service that allows you to have fresh, delicious, and healthy meals delivered straight to the comfort of your own home. With pre-portioned ingredients, you're able to get a meal that is quick, easy, unique, new, delicious, on the table in about 30 minutes. Some of them even 20 and 10 minutes. Recently, I've been really enjoying the 10 minute things because they are great for lunch and it's a great way to not think too much and just put like a really good sandwich, like a unique sandwich in my face hole. The holidays are around the corner. It is cooling down. You want soup, okay? <laughs> you want chowders, you want chilies, you want things that are warm and comforting. And HelloFresh allows me to have a boiling pot of deliciousness that's new and unique than always making just chicken noodle soup, which I do like a good chicken noodle soup, but that's not not the only option I have, I'm doing the dance. I either had to sing it or, I had to, or it had to go through my body at some point. I love the chicken sausage and kale soup, fantastic. I might've made it in footage. I don't know what we're showing in footage. I make so much from HelloFresh. The corn pepper chowder. It's actually more like a corn and potato chowder. Every time I see that, that's what I want. HelloFresh is quick and easy, comes pre-portioned so you're not wasting ingredients. Who wants to go to a grocery store on a Tuesday afternoon after work? Nobody. Nobody. It's cheaper than going to the grocery store and it's also about 25% less expensive than if you went out to get food. So if you would like to check out HelloFresh, go to hellofresh.com and use code Kenny60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Big thanks to HelloFresh who's always supporting the channel over here, a recurring sponsor. We love to see it. And let's get on to the debauchery. As per usual, I am living on the edge and filming this at 6.40 the night before. I really don't know why I have to do things in the most inconvenient way possible. I've Up until this point, I've just chalked it up to needing to have something to spice my life up, needed some way for me to live on the edge. But I don't know, maybe I need to take up a new hobby, see what all the hubbub about drugs is about. Anyway, last time we actually did a video about a movie, we talked about Dogface on Tubi, which was like a psychological thriller that didn't have a path forward. Like it, it knew a bunch of things that would have been cool in a psychological thriller movie, but then it just said, I don't know how to do any of that. So let's just put stuff on screen. Um, it was still fun. Everything from Tubi is usually a fun time at least. So if you wanna check that out, you can check that out up above, or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. But if you missed last week's video, I talked about uh, the newest season of Love is Blind, which the new episodes have come out. I have seen them. I'm not gonna say anything about my opinion on them until I make my part two, because you guys really want me to make that part two. I asked you guys how you felt. You said you wanted it, great. Speaking of part two, that's actually what this video is about. So over a year ago, I did a video, Passion Flicks, my love, my light, the devil on my shoulder and the light of my life, passion flicks. I did a video on their first attempts of supernatural romance when they released their movie called Wicked, not to be confused with the musical. It's not that interesting. If you're new to my channel and or are new to passion flicks and don't know what it is, it is one of my favorite things that exists on the internet. It is a streaming service devoted entirely to turning crappy romance novels into crappy movies. We've talked at length <laughs> about different films from the streaming service. So if you would like to check that out, those are all sprinkled in to the Bat Movies in the Beat uh, playlist. I should make a separate playlist just devoted to passion flicks, but 
That also sounds like work and being organized. And that just doesn't feel like me. <laughs> so gotta stay true to yourself, you know? And their movie for the book Wicked was truly a CGI clusterfuck with both no plot and too much of a plot at the same time. And I was hooked, do you hear me? It made no sense, it was terrible. And I waited patiently with bated breath until just a few days ago, they released the sequel to the series called Torn. Torn is a continuation of Ivy's story, who is our main character, that is a part of a secret organization that takes down evil creatures known as Fae. She is a part of a secret organization called the Order, which is bent on killing these mythical creatures as they venture into the human world and wreak havoc. However, at the end of the last film, if you recall, we discovered that Ivy, unbeknownst to her, is actually half fae, known as a halfling in this story, an existence that if discovered by her organization would result in them having to kill her. Also, of course, being that this is passion flicks and there must be a romance element to it because of that. To add to the drama, the person who would be given the task at taking her out would be her lover by the name of Ren, who is a part of the elite, which is an even more secret level of the secret organization. Before I get too deep in today's video, I would recommend that if you haven't seen my last video or haven't seen the movie, I highly doubt you've seen the movie. <laughs> I highly suggest you watch it. I watched it for, <laughs> to prepare for this video because genuinely, I didn't remember shit. All I remembered was the wigs, honey. Ooh. and that the story made no fucking sense. But if you would like to get a crash course, Wicked 101, if you will, you can check out that video. I have it linked in the description box for easy access. So assuming you're up to date, we can jump into this movie because I want to get into it pretty quickly because it is disrespectfully long. This movie had no right being over 90 minutes and it actually is two and a half hours. This movie has everything that you would expect from a sequel to Wicked, as well as just a movie existing on passion flicks. It has the terrible plot, the horrible editing, the wigs not only remain terrible, but seemingly more plentiful the second go around. Like not a single person can act and not a single person has a respectable or presentable headpiece. The CGI, not of quality. The arguably homophobic comic relief is still there. But of course we begin where the last movie finished off. Ivy has just discovered that she is half fae. She didn't know because she's adopted. The whole supernatural female main character has had dead parents, double if they're both dead, triple if she's adopted. You know, they got all of them in the same time. And now being that she is a halfling, she is now gonna be kind of public enemy number one of everyone, her organization, as well as the leader of the Fae, who is the prince. Now, if you recall, the prince will be looking for Ivy because he needs a halfling to bring forth the apocalypse baby. Because if a royal has a child with a halfling, that baby can be the key to close the gate Sorry, my eyes started glazing over. <laughs> if they can have a baby with a halfling, that baby will bring forth the apocalypse by being able to close the gate between the other world and humanity. I did it. You should really watch that first video if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Once that gate is destroyed, the other world can venture into the human world, wreak havoc, and take over humankind. So there she is left reeling with this realization that she is in many ways considered to be an abomination. And she knows that if Ren finds out who she really is, the love of her life, then he'll look at her differently. And not only that, she may be forced to give birth to the apocalypse baby. I could see how that would also put a little stress on your day. Her royal sidekick, again, the one that just feels like homophobia, Tink informs her though that she will not be able to bring forth the apocalypse baby if she does not consent to the conception of said apocalypse baby. This will then force the prince to do something that he's never had to do in his many, many eons of life, which is woo a woman. So it would seem that throughout this movie, what we're gonna be faced with is the realization that now that the prince knows that she's a halfling, he will not rest until he has her 
her in his grasp. Now around this time is when we have the first of like six mentions, maybe even more, of Amazon Prime. I also stay because you have the magical and wonderful Amazon Prime. Amazon does same day delivery now. Amazon. From Amazon. From Amazon. From Amazon. Amazon Prime. But not from Amazon. It screams that we couldn't make this movie for free, so we had to add another 30 minutes on that's just an Amazon Prime commercial. If you wanted the greatness, you have to sit through the commercials and that's fine, I guess. Rin comes over. They sleep next to each other and talk a bit about that black friend from the first movie that betrayed the entire order and is now working with the Fae. If you recall, her name is Val. And now apparently it is going around the order that Val might be the halfling. Do I wanna put mascara on? Do I feel like taking mascara off? I do not. Anyway, they're starting to think that Val is the halfling. And my first thought was, why? Because if she's already working with the royal, she's already knocked up with the apocalypse baby already. We we done for. But I also realize there's no point of trying to talk about how this doesn't make sense as if anything else in this movie ever made sense, so it's fine. After healing a bit from her injuries from the first movie, The Final Battle, she decides to go out and this is where she is confronted by the prince. Woo! What in the ultra? <laughs> For $36 on Sam's Beauty, we could get a sensational. There is no excuse for this, mama. They got Musk money. This is offensive. F Elon Musk. I'm sorry, I just had to put that out there since we're on the topic. If y'all didn't know, I don't know if I've said that in the spiel of this video. Passion Flicks is actually made by Tosca Musk, who is Elon Musk's sister. So good to know all that $8 you're gonna spend on Twitter now is going to great causes. I think I was on Twitter and somebody saw the trailer for this movie and said that he looks like a mixture of Chris Angel and Russell Brand. The accuracy, striking. <laughs> Why he walk like he got a turd on the brink of escape? He basically says very romantically, I need you to open the gates. So quote, let me impregnate you and you will want for nothing. Very Nick Cannon of him. Did y'all hear he got another baby on the way? I'm not surprised, just disappointed. I, <laughs> I just wanna know as a side note, what does he say? What does he do? Like, what is he saying to be like, yup, Here's another one. Like, what is the, what did you, what are you promising people? I wanna know, I wanna be the fly on the wall. Like, what are you telling people? <laughs> that makes them say, yup, number 12. Basically he threatens her, says that he'll end up taking his rage out on Ren if she doesn't consent to having sex with him and bringing forth the apocalypse baby, which you don't know if you weren't aware. It's not how consent works, okay? <laughs> Thinking again that Val is the halfling, the order end up murdering her parents. And I don't know why, but they do. <laughs> I don't know, I guess they think they were compromised by the high fae, but there's no real evidence that she's the halfling anyway. They just don't like her ass, <laughs> so. And it's also crazy because Ivy knows that she's the halfling. But rest assured that the innocent black people murdered off screen does not stop the love train from choo-chooing, um, so. Yay, all is well with the world. Anyway, if you recall from the first movie, there was a woman that had all the answers and all the information about the Fae who also had a mental breakdown. Well, she goes missing and her daughter ends up giving them information about how there used to be good Fae. And Ivy is really struck with this realization that there are Fae who are not bad. If you recall last time, I remember saying something along the lines of like, these motherfuckers just walking around buying sandals and beignets and having consensual sex in a club and they still getting taken out. So I'm like, is it that they're actually bad or are y'all racist? <laughs> they come from a world that's not like ours. It sounds like racism to me. And I'm, and you know, my suspicions about it actually gets worse the more this movie goes on. Clocked you, I clocked you. Because she is truly floored by the concept that there are this unfamiliar group of people that not all of them are completely and utterly generally bad people. Ren is also similarly shocked by the concept of there being good fae. But before we can contemplate this extraterrestrial xenophobia, a fae breaks into Ivy's apartment fighting Ren, trying to take him out specifically, because if you recall, she's the halfling, they need her a lot. The fight ends, however, when we discover that Tink isn't always poly pocket size. He can actually grow into a full grown man with a lot of power. He destroys the Fae by chopping his head off with his dick out. You're no. not me. No. It's the middle of the night. And after this exchange, Ivy realizes that they were sent to take out Ren. 
particularly the competition because the prince knows that she's in love with him. After fully healing, Ivy returns to the order. That is where she is greeted by new members who are in from Colorado, particularly brought in to find the halfling. They have common sense and reach the very reasonable conclusion that there's no evidence to suggest that Val is the halfling at all. Soon after this, Ivy ends up running into Val where they have a confrontation on top of a rooftop. See, this is making me mad because this movie is a waste of money because they use green screen. It's giving very, I did not hit her. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Ivy is like, why did you betray us? Why did you turn yourself over into the Fae? Your parents died because of you. And she's like weirdly cool with it. She's just like, sacrifices, they gotta be made. <laughs> also, I disagree. I don't think her parents died because of her. I think her parents died because y'all didn't do your job to figure out whether or not it made sense that she's the halfling. I think, I think, this may be y'all fault, one could say, but cool. Val doesn't feel too hurt about the death of her parents because she's too busy musing over how great Fay Dick is. She's like, it's the best sex you ever had and I let them feed on me. She's like, the Fae are gonna win, they're gonna take over the world, I might as well enjoy the process and be on the winning side. But just as they're fighting, in comes <laughs> Jared Leto. <laughs> what the fuck? And though she's given everything to be with this man, Val is comedically and immediately killed. <laughs> It seems like things are really going haywire and this is when Ivy decides that she has to admit to Ren that she is the halfling. He's like, no, no, this can't be. Like, no, Val's the halfling. And she's like, why does that make sense? Cause it doesn't. He's like, how can this be? I'm, I'm so strict about my one drop rule. How can I be, how can I be? How can I be in love with a mulatto? A half breed, no less. <laughs> to believe her and she decides to stab her hand with the special like uh stake thing that shows if you're a halfling if your blood bubbles she's like this is it i'm telling you the truth i am the halfling and i have to tell you this because i want to be honest with you i love you he doesn't take any of that information the greatest he's like wow that's a lot you tell me this and then you say you love me and i just i'm i'm struggling to process this information i i, I can't even right now they separate she cries herself to sleep and she awakes the next morning to go back to her job at the order. She sees two Fae fighting in the parking lot. One kills the other and the remaining one impales herself on Ivy's stake. I'm telling you this scene, just because I don't know if it's ever gonna be important again, maybe in the next movie, but uh, rest assured, it meant nothing in this one. <laughs> Back at her job, she is told that Ren has gone missing and they're trying to figure out where he could have gone, what caused him to leave, so on and so forth. Apparently also there were a bunch of humans who were killed at a local Fae club. And Ivy begins to fear that perhaps Ren was one of the people who died because of the Fae. But suddenly Ren just reappears out of the blue. She's like, where have you been? He's like, I around. Nope. Nope. I've seen too many movies, baby. I've seen too much garbage. You cannot trick me. Okay. But he apologizes for how he left things and how he reacted after finding out that she's the halfling. They get beignets and suddenly the dessert that he'd always loved, he doesn't like anymore. That's when you should have known something ain't right. Beignets are delicious. They go back to his place, nearly get it on, but are interrupted by one of the new uh, order members that came in from Colorado, a really cocky son of a bitch. And Ren kills him immediately. He's quite annoying. Why are all the kills in this movie so funny for some reason? Like zero to a hundred. Ren is like, I have to get rid of the body, so be on your way. I'll meet with you later, which canonically makes no sense because again, you're not Rin, so why, you finally found the halfling and okay, whatever. But he lets her go in order to get rid of the body. But she returns eventually to confront him about the murder he just committed. And he's like, I did it to protect you, so. She starts to realize that he doesn't like his coffee the same way and he doesn't remember the nickname that he's always given her. And that's when she realizes that it's not Ren, it is an imposter. It is the prince. There is a tussle in which it ends with him ripping off her necklace that stops her from being compelled and sucks the life out of her until she passes out. She awakens in a 365 days nightmare, held captive at the prince's manor and is forced to wait there with a collar around her neck 
until she consents. Again, I don't think we've read a book on what that actually means. If this was the method of going about it, because if she would have slept with you in Rin form, she still didn't consent to having sex with you. But again, she's in this roided up 365 days fantasy. They put a collar on her and lead her out to see the prince. There was something about this scene that really got me thinking about how consent and legality really switches the optics of stuff like this, doesn't it? Cause like, cause like if you into it, this is fun. If you're not, this is slavery. <laughs> she would find that Ren has actually been kidnapped by the prince and his followers held captive and tortured by a fae named Brina. The prince decides to issue a deal in which if she quote unquote consents to sleeping with the prince, he will let Ren go. Which again, not how consent works, babe. Do we need to do like a one, two, threes on what that actually means? Cause apparently we need to go back to like, the rudimentary stages of what that means. She's able to convince the prince that she will need at least three weeks to get comfortable and until she's able and willing to issue that consent. If she is given three weeks and Rin is let go, then she will submit. Consent isn't given in duress, but okay, let's keep going. It's a story, it's a movie. Okay, they agree and Rin is sent away. The next day she is met by the good fae and the bitch named Brina. Brina taunts her and says how good it was to feed on her beloved Wren and how good he tasted on her lips. They make Ivy shower and prepare for the prince. He likes her to be hairless. Ugh. <laughs> Brina taunts her the entire time she bathes. But finally, after dressing, Ivy nearly stabs her eye out. I like it, no talking, no messing around, just efficiency, good honor. The prince takes Ivy to the room where they have a bunch of humans they feast on and tells her that she is a halfling, meaning that she would be able to feed on humans as well. This is something that she didn't know about because up until this point, she'd been living as a human and eating food, but she can also gain sustenance from the life force of humans. They had been starving her at this place, forcing her to break down her humanity and succumb to feasting on human energy. After feeding on the vibes of humans, I don't know, she gets the itis and is nearly compelled by the prince to have sex, which again, is not consent, Jesus Christ. The next morning she awakes disgusted by the concept of feasting on humans, vomiting from the guilt. She is later brought to the prince to see him getting sloppy toppy from Brina for some reason. I don't know what they thought was gonna happen. This made me no more uh, interested in fucking you. It just let me know that you quick. <laughs> Like that's embarrassing. Why would you want an audience for that? Anyway, she is made to feed on humans continually during her time at this den of sorts of the prince. At some point she is able to convince the prince to allow her to be out for a few moments of fresh air. At which time she asks, what is the plan that they have anyway? Like, what are they doing? He simply says that once the gate is open, they will take over this world because the other world is currently dying from an infinite chill, an endless winter. And now they will go into this world and take it over from there for the Fae of the other world. They currently are already doing beginning steps of that. There's Fae in every level of government around the world. So now they're just doing the final steps to again, bring forth the apocalypse baby and take over the world. But at night she is visited by the nice Fae and is given the opportunity to run away while the prince is away from the estate of sorts. They make their escape and are nearly killed by Fae but they're able to survive when Ren gets there at the last minute, along with Tink, full size Tink at this point. They are accompanied by a bunch of like, <laughs> the first thing that came to mind was like underground railroad fae that are gonna lead her to freedom. <laughs> um, <laughs> and being that she was like a slave in the thing, it's not, mm. cause at first I was like, is that a reach to make that correlation? But I don't, There might be some racial undertone. 
or am I projecting? I don't know. This movie's a mess is what it is. Um, some good Fae lead her to freedom and hide her away from the evil Fae and the prince. Ren is there accepting Ivy for who she is and is ready to kill the prince forever putting her in harm's way. They reconcile. He says how much he loves her and that it doesn't matter that she's a halfling. And in the final eight minutes of this movie, I decided to skip a lot of it because it felt like it should have been over. Again, this is at the like two hour, 30 minute mark at this point. I'm like, why is there still eight more minutes of movie? But basically in this moment, we find out the plan to close the gate for good. In order to close the gate, they'll need the blood of a halfling of the royal, as well as a special crystal that was in the first movie. I don't remember if I ever mentioned it, a crystal. And they must do a fight on the other side of the gate in the other world. Dun, dun, dun. And I guess we're not supposed to ask logistically how they're supposed to get back on the other side when they do that, but it's a movie. So anyway, that's the end of it. Piece of shit, wasn't it? It felt like such a letdown. I was like, damn, are you serious? I waited a year for this bullshit? That's not even a movie. And again, this video isn't the longest video I've ever made at all. I'm just looking at the time of me speaking. This movie for some reason is somewhere between 40 minutes to an hour longer than movies that I usually talk about for this channel. This movie was stupid and a waste of time and a waste of wig money. But alas, I'm still interested to see what happens in the next one. So. I'll be there. If you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD. If you have other bad movies that you'd like me to check out, feel free to put them down below and I will see you guys next time.